Okay. If, what I like to do is to take, you can just have a seat and then you can just have a seat. Oh, you want to start a little um, What happened there? Um, Newton's second law of motion, everybody ready? All right, I don't care. Uh, force. It's a push or pull, right? We're going to get a little bit more intricate than that. We're going to a little bit more detail. A physical quantity that can influence motion. A physical quantity. Yeah, your notes. Okay. A physical quantity that can influence motion, a push or a pull. Air resistance is a force. Okay? Since for, since forever. Friction is a type of force. Gravity is a type of force. Okay? Muscle contraction can be a type of force. Because how do your muscles work? They are always pulling. Right? As one pulls, if I, if I contract my bicep, this one extends. They're in a push and pull system. Okay? Same thing, this, these are opposing muscle groups, right? That's why if you work out your biceps, maybe a good idea to work out your triceps also. At the same time, you're opposing muscle groups, right? If you work out your quadriceps, in front of your legs, you work out the back of your legs. I don't know why I told you that. It has nothing to do with physics. Kind of, it does, but you know. It's it's yeah. It does. Now. I can't see anything. Because your hair's in the way. Now. Uh, so. <laughs> has magnitude. Magnitude is a, just size. By size, it means a number we can put to it. You with me on that? Has magnitude and direction, meaning it's a vector. Vector is size, how fast you're going in velocity uh, case, in a certain direction. I'm going 45 miles an hour in a northeasterly direction as a vector. Magnitude. So if I have a force, you can calculate the amount of force I'm pushing on this cart in a certain direction. Pushing it or pulling it? Like you put like three pounds of force. Just... We're going to use the term newtons, but yes. A lot of non-scientists like to use pounds per square inch. We're going to use the term newton. That's, you know you're big time in science when they have a unit that's named after you. Okay? So we're going to talk about um, units of force. We're going to use the term we're going to talk about is the newton. The newton. So now... Do the newton balls weigh a newton? Say it again. Do the newton balls weigh a newton? Probably. <laughs> on this planet. True. Be a lot denser. Guys, why do they make the in? Why do they come up with the, They don't want, this is too messy for scientists and for lay people, right? So instead of writing this every time, they just write this. Scientists are efficient, not lazy, efficient. They don't want to write this every time. Okay? But notice that this is the same as this. Okay? So it basically it is mass times acceleration. Whoa, that was weird. Did something just disappear? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Probably. Weird. Because everybody understand that this is a mass? This is the unit for mass right here, right? This is mass. Make sure this is mass. This stands for meters, right? This is where it gets confusing. Right? Meters over second squared is what variable? Acceleration. So it is, so the Newton is basically mass in kilograms times A, which is acceleration. That's all it is. Mass times acceleration. We're using the kilogram now. That's the SI unit for mass, kilogram. Everybody okay thus far? So instead of writing this every time, they just want to write in for newtons because they want to be efficient. 
All right. Can I go on the next slide? No. Okay. Yes. Okay. Good question. Hope I can answer it. Okay. So acceleration, you know, is a number, of course. Yeah. Of course, I was just. Yeah. Keep on. Okay. So let's say it wasn't moving. Does that mean that a newton would be equal to zero? Yes. If you have zero mass, it's going to be zero on top. If you move zero meters, it's going to be zero. So no newtons. So if one of them is zero, then than a newton is zero. Exactly. If any of these numbers are zero, the force is zero. Then how do you measure a newton if something isn't moving? So a force is the amount of pressure you put on something, right? So if I put a bunch of pressure on this, right? I am putting pressure on this, but this thing has mass going in the opposite direction for inertia. So if I push it like you would measure over time and not as a... Right. So if I have something push, if I have something pushing this way at a magnitude, and I have something pushing this way at a magnitude, right? This will not show up, but this will move it because it's bigger in direction. Okay, this gets into some complicated stuff. I had actually teach myself trigonometry the other day because I was like, what is trig used for? Trig is used in this. Trigonometry is awesome. Okay, Sokotoa. Okay, we'll learn about Sokotoa. Okay, yeah, remember Sokotoa? Yeah. All right, we'll talk more about that later. Sokotoa. Someone can be caught in the middle of the trigonometry. recording, by the way. Okay, there you go. Good talk. Now, so. Define. This is a cumbersome definition I'm going to explain to you, okay? This is the second law of define. All right, now this is kind of a, the effect of an unbalanced force. The key word is unbalanced force. To cause the body to accelerate in the direction of the unbalanced force. So if you had to summarize Newton's second law in two words, unbalanced force. The first law Inertia. I like to take complicated ideas and whittle them down to the most important information. So if you only remember one thing about Newton's first law, inertia. The only the second thing about the second law is unbalanced force. Two words for the second law, one word for the first law. Inertia, unbalanced force. Because if the force is balanced here, it doesn't move, right? This pushing, this idea of wanting to push and me pushing against is the same. Okay. Like your addition would make it so that there's no... Exactly. But now if I'm pushing, now this is an unbalanced force. I'm pushing this whole thing in this direction. Okay? That's causing acceleration. Okay? So the main word with this is unbalanced force, in my, in my opinion. Okay? So here's the idea. That's why the bell ringer. Acceleration is directly proportional to the force. Okay? As force goes up, acceleration goes up. Directly proportional, the same, go the same direction. And the force is inversely proportional to the mass. As mass goes up, what happens to acceleration? Goes down. goes down. Everybody see the difference now? So for me, from the spring rugby season, I'm going to lose about 10 pounds, right? So I'm carrying extra weight, mass, that is causing my acceleration to not be at an optimal level. Because it's not muscle, it's adipose tissue, which is a code for fat. Right? Yes? Wouldn't that just... His, okay, so let's say you gain muscle, wouldn't that add mass? That would be great. Yeah, but that's the right type. That's something that could cause more force. You with me? You that muscle can add okay, force. So the force takes... Yeah, yeah that, okay. the muscle can add force. However, if it's fat, right? It's fat, it's, it's not adding any force. So you want to lose 10 pounds of fat. Exactly. <laughs> do you know your body likes fat? You I don't. The only way I can do the, there's two ways to do the calipers, it's pretty accurate, the best way to do it is water displacement. So I'd like to do that at some point in time, I don't know what it is. So it'd probably be too higher than I should. I don't, I don't eat clean enough, I don't eat clean enough. Uh, you eat cleaner so I want to lose more weight. Okay? It's all about diet. Does everybody understand this though? Acceleration is directly proportional. As one goes up, the other goes up, of course. Okay? Well, I'm going to show you guys two graphs. That will summarize this well for you guys. If you understand this, good. And if you don't understand this, the graphs will help. Okay? The graphs will help. Hopefully today's bell ringer help when I talk about inversely proportional and directly proportional. Okay? Because those are important to understand. If I say it has a positive correlation, that's the same thing. Um, as one goes up, the other goes up. If I say a negative correlation, as one goes up, the other goes down. Positive slope, negative slope. You with me on that? Positive correlation, negative correlation. You don't have to know that, but that's just 
knowledge. You know? I have a question. Yep. How does an explosion produce that much force? Yeah. What type of explosion? I... Like just the... Uh, <laughs> like a grenade, how does something that small create yeah. that? Mm. Like, is it just the chemical reaction? It's a multitude of things. It is the com it's basically so it's combustion. A lot of times, it's combustion reaction. It's packed so close. So it's pressure. PV equals nRT, right? Yeah. All that's related to the pressure really high. It's going to make the explosion nowhere to go except for a certain direction. It flies out there. And it gets more complicated than that with uh, more sophisticated the bombs get. Okay. I don't get too in depth in bomb making, right? Especially while we're recording. You know what I'm saying? You think you're going to get a light of All right. Now, I want you to write this out. Right? Draw. Oh, wait. Wait. Now, this is a force first acceleration graph. So imagine that acceleration is here and force is down here. Acceleration is here. Mass is here. So this is as this goes up, this goes down. As this goes up, this goes up. So draw those graphs, please. And your this will help you. You'll see this on a quiz. Right? So is this this is direct, right? Directly proportional. Directly proportional. This is inversely. Proportional. Yeah? Mm -hmm. Positive correlation, negative correlation. This is a negative slope? Yeah. Yes, negative correlation. Positive correlation, that's some stat stuff, which I think you guys are doing in Deanna's, Deanna's class. Deanna's. It's statistics. Yep, standard deviation. I taught statistics at the, well, I was a supplemental instructor at the college level, so if you have any. I, I, I really like statistics. No, I, just, I was an undergrad that was helping other kids that just struggled with it in, in college. I got paid for it. Okay. Uh, Did you get so, credits for that too? Uh, no, I just got paid. I got paid like 10 bucks an hour. Did which you, wasn't bad. I just started doing my homework. Did you yeah. do it or no? No, no. What? You didn't do it at all. You just chilled or what? Well, I just chilled until people need help. They took the class and you know the guy asked me, the professor asked me, hey, would you be willing next semester to help out students that struggle? Yeah. Hey, everybody have this written down that wants to? Was that a meh? Meh. Can I go move on? People are still writing. That's okay. You sure? No. You're not sure? A whole copy out of somebody. I don't want to. I got it. Everybody else still still writing stuff down? You good? You guys good? Real good? All right. All right, toolbox. Go to your toolbox. Ay. No me gusta. Yeah. Is it really cool? Like a day where we just like, like talk to something. No, we're not. So I had a guy, a kid, uh, my other school, um, a long time ago said he just wanted an hour just to ask random questions. Hey, you know, I completely yeah. agree with this. Yeah. Yeah. be so fun. Well, yeah, we're flying. All right, guys, do me a favor. Do not shh. turn your toolbox. Don't ride it like this. Ride it like this. I mean, it's the same thing, right? Wow, I don't have space to make this one. What is the net? Oh. The net force. The net force. Hi, Netflix. And chill. All right. So. This is Netflix and chill with it. The science of it. Oh. What did I miss? What was that? No, nothing. Uh, what? I just keep on teaching. Just keep on teaching. I go back on the recording, right? Right? Oh. No, you didn't miss anything. You're not going to find anything. No man, all right. So I don't want to find any bad phrases. I don't like to something. All right. Just like whisper to the camera. No. <laughs> all right, guys, can I set this up in a pie chart? Yes. No. You can. No. How? Yeah. Oh, you put eight goes on top. Eight no. F goes on top. The numerator always goes on top. I'll do that. What is it? This is called the. Let's call this the. Force equation, if you want to. Because we know about acceleration. Now, you're ready for some nerddom. 
No. Too bad. What is A equal to in units? Units, yeah. What's force units? Acceleration. Mass over acceleration. There you go. Well, ma mass times acceleration. Yeah. That was close. Close enough. You guys with me on that? Yeah. Now check this out. If I if I want to find the force of something, what do I do? I cover this up, right? Yeah. A times m. Okay. So if I do a times m, so a. So acceleration times mass. What's that going to be equal to? This right here, right? Everybody see it? Mm -hmm. This is a very valuable for you guys that can see this, the mathematics involved, the stuff canceling out. Because then you don't have to memorize equations. You're like, okay, I want to get this unit. I want this crap to cancel out. You don't have to know any equations. Okay? Towards the end of the year, I hope you're like, okay, your dimensional analysis is good enough. Like, oh, I want those units. So you don't have to look at equations at that point in time. Okay? Yeah, okay. Then you can just like, oh, I want these units. Because I know my units. I get things to cancel out algebraically through dimensional analysis. All right? If you don't know how to do that at the end of the semester, it's okay. But hopefully you can. All right, good. What are you doing good so far? Everybody has this written down? Yes. Yeah. Mass. Now wait. Not going Oh, so if I want to do acceleration, it would be this. Net divided by mass, right? If I want to figure out mass, it's force divided by acceleration. God, I want to use these pie charts if you're not good at algebra. Got to know them. And you've got to be able to set them up. Because henceforth, you will not be given pie charts on quizzes. You'll have to create your own. But that's easy, right? You make a fraction, the numerator goes on top, the other two go on the bottom. We fossil. 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 It's fácil. It's fácil. I said fácil. No? I said fácil. 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 Muy fácil. Fácil. Muy fácil. Fácil. Muy fácil. Muy fácil. Muy fácil. Go ahead and record this. Okay, so. Mr. Smith's ignorance of Spanish. Uh, so. Anyway, I have not been doing Rosetta Stone in a while. I've kind of slacked on that. <laughs> no, no. All right. Wasn't like five million? No. God, no. Uh, everybody okay this far? You get enough views, YouTube will pay you. Exactly. No, no. You gotta have more than a thousand so You get like double for teaching. Hope oh, everybody's done with that. So guys, shh. What was the most important thing on that page that probably for some of you that I just wrote down? The pie chart. The pie chart. Right? So put that in there so you can look at it quickly, but know how it is derived. Know how it is made. Know how to set it up. All synonyms. Okay? Alright, so same idea.